is ultimately important for you to, to look at your goals, truly what you want to do in your life, and then look at the people who you spend the most time with in your life and figure out if that lines up. What's happening? What's happening, guys? Good morning. Good morning to you. It is Thursday, January 23rd, 2020, which means, man, I can't believe it. We only got eight days left to January 2020. I cannot believe that January is almost over already. So 6% of your year is gone already. Keep that in mind, guys, as, as you go through this year, man, and you start looking and how fast the time flies, man, it, you, you can't keep track of it fa more frequently. So 343 days left in this year. So let's make sure we're doing everything in our power to make the absolute best of every single day that we've got in 2020. So this morning, guys, we're going to continue uh, talking about the 2020 Gold Digger Retreat that we just finished up uh, just less than a week ago today down in Anguilla. Uh, and this morning, I want to give you guys just some high-level insight. It's hard to dig into this stuff because it's it's hours and hours and hours of content here. Uh, but I want to give you some insight on some of the tactical business knowledge uh, that was shared from some of the speakers that we had uh, come down there to Anguilla. Uh, and we had Britton Costa uh, come in on a, uh, a webcast. So uh, I'm going to start out. Uh, with Jeremy Haynes. And uh, Jeremy, uh, for those of you who don't follow Jeremy, if you follow him on Instagram, it's just at Jeremy and Jeremy Haynes. You can follow him on Facebook at H-A-Y-N-E-S. Uh, and Jeremy covered uh, quite a variety of information, but I'm going to focus in this morning on, uh, he covered the 13 emotional manipulators when it comes to marketing psychology. And uh, man, was it unbelievably enlightening. So, but before I jump into that, I just want to say good morning, Derek, Trisha, Sam, Chris, what's happening to my wife? She's on here too. Um, so, but there are 13 emotional manipulators that, uh, that, you know, that are used in marketing. And, you know, I think it's important when you use the word manipulation, uh, a lot of people have a negative reaction to that. Uh, and that's not the idea. It is, you know, the, the idea of manipulation is to be used in the right way to get somebody to take action on something that they actually want or need already. So uh, just, just to put that out there and be clear. And so uh, I'm going to run through these real quick just so you guys get an idea of what they're like. And then I'm going to try to just touch on uh, a couple of these so that you guys understand exactly, you know, kind of the information that was covered there. And you can get an idea of why people take action uh, from marketing or why you take action from marketing. It's very interesting uh, when he was talking about these, how, you know, you start to recognize some of your own buying patterns and decisions based on uh, these emotional manipulators. So uh, the first one is lust or sex motivation. Uh, the second one is escape. So getting to greener pastures. Third is it esteem or inadequacy. The fourth is fear. Uh, fifth is guilt, affinity, greed, deep anxiety, persistent worry, feeling impotent, poor sense of self, excess concern over what other people think, and last but not least, victimhood and paranoia. Uh, so what Jeremy talked about was was specific examples as to you know how these things uh, play a role, and he used uh, Disney as an example of how some of the things uh, that we see from Disney, which may not be specifically directed at these emotional manipulators, but there's a result to them that they put out there uh, that drives people in a certain way. So the example of, of lust or sex motivation. So you're looking for approval, acceptance, admiration, uh, popularity. You want to be desired. You want to be interesting to people. Um, you know, a specific connection. So 
for for men, it's specifically driven by sex. For females, it's it's more in the sense of they'll be more attractive. Uh, so this example would be, you know, you are more sought after. You feel uh, more desired if you are able to, for example, buy the Fast Pass in Disney World that allows you and your family to skip the line, or you and your girlfriend to skip the line. You would be more sought after. You would be more desirable as that person that is able to do that. So that marketing of being able to skip the lines in the way that they deliver those messages uh, drives that type of motivation, that type of emotional manipulation. So it's very interesting uh, how those things aren't always just directed that way specifically, but they have a broad reach as to the emotional manipulation that they have on us. And these marketing companies absolutely uh, understand the impact of how how those things work and they wrap that in to their marketing strategy. If we go to the second one, uh, greener pastures. So the escape, uh, what's on his slide here is uh, People are like cats. They always want to be in the other room, right? They're always looking to get out of what they're doing and moving on to something else. Um, you know, people recognize uh, people recognize these things as a way to escape their current situation and move on to something else. So, uh, classic green pastures on the other side of the fence are all applied here. Um, when you go to the third one. Uh, the idea of esteem or inadequacy, if something gives you a higher level of confidence, a higher level of status, elitism, prestige, you're part of the in crowd. These are all marketing techniques uh, in the way that you can be manipulated through marketing, right? Um, you're, if you're superior to others, that's a way that people market to you with esteem and ina inadequacy. Uh, so to move on to the second presenter here, Jordan Stupar. So Jordan uh, talked about sales, personal branding, prospecting, and follow-up to be specific. And uh, man, Jordan's presentation, uh, for those of you who don't know Jordan Stupar, it's just at Jordan Stupar, or, and his last name is spelled S-T-U-P-A-R. Uh, you guys can follow him. His, his Instagram handle is just at Jordan Stupar. Uh, on Facebook, you can find him, just uh, type in his name. And so he covered, uh, again, prospecting, personal branding, and follow-up. So, you know, when it comes to personal branding, where should you be, right? If you're a business owner, like uh, my man, like my man Derek that's on here, um, you've got Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. You should be omnipresent on all of those channels if you have the ability to connect with customers on all of those platforms, which I would believe that all of us do. Every single person that's in business has customers on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And so what that content does is enables you, as you pump content out onto the internet, it enables you to digitally duplicate yourself to where people can go find you and find content and find what you're all about and you are not directly engaging with them. So the idea is I can only engage one-on-one. -on -one. I can only be one place, me personally. But when I digitally duplicate myself to these online platforms and I'm putting out posts and I'm constantly pinging people and I'm uh, out in front of hundreds and thousands of people every single day, that allows me to be omnipresent in the market and allows more people to think of you when it comes to whatever it is that you do, real estate, uh, asphalt paving, technology products, uh, awnings as Derek does, uh, whatever that is, it enables you to be out there and be present on a far bigger reach uh, than you would be if you were not digitally duplicated on these platforms. So Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube is really what he focused in on. Um, and we spent a lot of time talking about that both during his presentation and afterwards. So let's dive into prospecting uh, in today's world. This is one of the things uh, several years ago, I hired Jordan to be uh, my personal sales coach. 
uh, and it changed everything about the way that I sold and the way that uh, we currently run our businesses today is you know, that digital duplication, that approach, and the way that we contact people, the way that we prospect people and get introduced to customers is completely different today than it was uh, several years ago before I met Jordan. So there's really two ways of getting uh, customers' attention, and that is personal outreach. So through cold calls, cold emails, uh, cold social media connections, and trade shows. And then the second way is obviously through marketing or advertising campaigns, right? Uh, the first way is 100% free, right? You can make cold calls, you can do emails, you can do social media. Uh, I guess trade shows you'd have to pay a little bit for, but sometimes not even that. You can show up and just kind of network with people uh, through that personal outreach method. And then the second method, uh, the marketing and advertising campaigns, which Jeremy talked quite a bit about, those are the things that, that actually cost money. The best results come from having a mix of those two, two different uh, approaches. So there's three questions that you have to ask yourself that Jordan covered uh, when it comes to prospecting. And that is, you know, who is your ideal prospect? Where are those people at? And what do they want from you? Three simple questions, right? But those three questions will get you very clear on the message that you should be putting out there into the world. Uh, and so he talked a lot about providing information, providing value, uh, putting that value out on the internet, uh, out on all these social platforms so that people have the ability to connect with you. And then he went through a specific prospecting sales algorithm, if you will, uh, that he uses and that we personally use at the Pavement Group, uh, at Top Contractor School, every, every single business uh, that I am involved in, we use this same approach about how to cold call, that exact approach of how those phone calls sound. Uh, the one thing that I will tell you, the biggest thing that people get wrong when it comes to cold calling and cold outreach is trying to sell people things uh, right out of the gate over the phone. The idea is to provide these people with value that allows them to be interested in you, your company, and the product that you're providing, the solution that you're providing to a problem that they have. So keep that in mind, guys. And we don't have enough time this morning to go through every single thing uh, that he did. But um, I will just tell you, it, it's super impactful, guys. If you get nothing more out of this, make sure that you've got a brand that exists online and make sure that if you're, tr if you're in sales, that you constantly have a routine of prospecting. And I'm not talking about just sitting down and making calls. I'm talking about creating a culture of prospecting where you're constantly connecting with people via social media, over the phone, via follow-ups, via every, every way that you can connect with people and introduce yourself, your company, and your product, which solves their problems, to customers. You want to be doing that as frequently as you possibly can. Um, follow up guys is the difference. Uh, what Jordan said is follow up. So once you get engaged with a customer, follow up is the difference between the 1% income earners and everyone else. Those people get followed up on by the 1%, by the elite, by the real salespeople out in the world. Uh, they will get followed up with one to 24 times in the first 18 days that you are connected with them. There's 24 connections in 18 days of some sort. That may seem overwhelming to you. That may seem like you would be annoying people. And if that's the case, you've got to get more creative with the ways that you do it. So we're talking about liking people's posts, interacting on social media, sending them videos, text messages, emails, uh, something in the mail, something out of the blue, right? All of these different ways are ways to engage with customers that is going to elevate your level of success when it comes to follow-up and conversion. Um, so as I go through here, uh, follow-up is supposed to be fun, guys. Don't make it boring. Um, there's a variety of ways that we covered of, of specific tactical ways for follow-up. Um, I wish I could share them all with you this morning, but we don't have, we don't have time for that. Uh, some stats on follow-up. 48% of salespeople never follow-up. So almost half the salespeople out there in the world never take the time to follow up. 
92% of sales take place between the fifth and the 12th follow-up. And last but not least, 80 plus percent of prospects say no four times before they say yes. And I would leave you with this. Jordan didn't cover this in, in uh, in his hour with us. But I will tell you that no, in the world of sales, if you are handling yourself professionally and you're not being annoying, no is a simple way for a customer to say, I don't have enough information to say yes. So keep that in mind, guys, as you're going through uh, follow-up and and trying to convert people from prospects to customers. So he talked about something called the push-pull method. And I'm going to move on here in a second because I still got to cover uh, Britton Costa, who, who talked about leadership. Uh, push versus pull. So you have your brand and your content in the center, right? And you've got everything that exists online. And you've got four main methods to communicate with people. You've got phone calls, emails, text messages or, or video messages, and then last but not least, social media messages. And so the idea, guys, is that push-pull method. So you're pushing out content and you're pulling customers in. You're pushing out phone calls and those customers are going to pull back in uh, as you as you reach out and connect with them, that push-pull method of using phone calls, emails, text messages, social media messages uh, is a way to build an enormous sales funnel where there is no pressure but a ton of value being exchanged through that push and pull method. And at some point, those customers start to convert because they get the idea of how much value you and your company can bring to them. I know I'm going fast here, guys, but I don't really have a choice because there's a lot to cover here. So, But I want to say good morning, Heather, Matt, Chris, Bruce. What's happening, guys? Chris Patterson, what's going on, brother? Darren Ridenauer, Patricia, my girl, what's happening, man? I appreciate all of you guys uh, joining me here every single morning, uh, more than you know. So, uh, all right, so we're going to move on here from Britain uh, on to Britain Costa, who covered leadership, creating a flawless vision built on promise. And uh, we had Britain on webcast, and uh, I was literally just re-watching this video this morning, and it was, it was unbelievable, uh, the level of content that he provided to us. So um, vision to keep it simple, Britain said, is the picture of what could be and should be if everything goes the way that you create it. Uh, keep in mind of this, guys. For you guys who are out there who are leaders in your business, and I always say this, but everybody is a leader in their business, even if that's not your title. Keep in mind, and this is biblical, guys, Without vision, people will perish. It says it in the Bible, guys, and it couldn't be more true in life and in business. If you have no vision for your life, if you have no vision for your business, what's happening, Christina? Good morning. If you have no vision, people will perish. And Britton talked about the four main key ingredients to having a great vision for your company, and that is Clarity in your vision, the four C's. Clarity, compelling, commitment level, and it should be built on community. The four C's. Clarity, compelling, commitment level, and it should be built to create a community within your company. One of the key things of building a vision for your company, and and I do this every single January, Britain does it as well, is to literally take quiet time, which we talked a lot about quiet time at this retreat too. So taking 30 minutes a day is what I always recommend. But taking quiet time, take all distractions away and write down all of the things that you want to happen for your business this year. If you can take that away, you take all the distractions away. Go somewhere, it has to be quiet, guys. We're not talking about going somewhere away from you know, your, your family or your friends just by yourself talking quiet time, like truly shut everything down and write it all down. Do you want uh, a certain level of revenue, a certain level of income? Do you want to promote a certain number of people within your business? Do you see people within your business being in a different place at the end of the year? Are you changing positions? Are you expanding into new markets? Writing all of that stuff down to create that vision for yourself. Before you can pour that vision into other people, 
you have to be able to have it yourself and it has to be crystal clear. The only way that you can get that vision is to create it during times where you don't have anything else distracting you. Very critical. Uh, he talked about the six basic human needs. So as you're creating your vision for your company, making sure that it's tied back to the six basic human needs. If you guys don't know what those are, uh, it is they are certainty, uncertainty, love or connection to others, uh, growth, contribution, and significance. I know I'm going fast here, so hopefully if you guys can't write all this down, you'll have to go just go back and watch it, but i got to fit it in here in the next uh, couple of minutes here. So, uh, so certainty, uncertainty, love or connection to others, growth, contribution, and significance. That's what your people want to feel. Those are the basic, six basic human needs, and everybody has a little bit different structure as to how those needs uh can be fulfilled or the order in which they want them to be fulfilled. He talked about how leaders see everything first as a result of writing these things down and getting clear. And they're always able to see the vision before it happens as a result of doing that. You ever notice that? That the leader never be, a good leader is never surprised by the results that happen because they've already gone through it in their mind. They've already created that vision. They've already visualized it. It's called vision because it has to be visualized. It has to be imagined before it can become reality. We talked about putting uh, your vision and your goals on the screensaver of your phone. Interesting statistics, which I didn't know the specifics of these, but Britton covered it. The average performer, so if you have an average performer in your company, they are looking at their phone around 300 times a day, the lock screen of your phone. A top performer, a high performer, is looking at their phone 600 to 700 times a day. So if you were to look at my phone, every single goal that I have uh, for me, for our company, for our team, uh, is on, on the lock screen of my phone. And I look at it every single day. And so every time I pick up my phone, it gets burned into my brain more and more and more and more. So if I'm looking at my phone six to 700 times a day, how likely do you think it is that those goals will become a reality? How much more likely do you think it will be that I believe in those goals as I look at them six to 700 times a day? So if we use 600... 23 days so far, I've looked at my goals 13,800 times so far year to date, just in January. Those become something that you believe. It comes becomes cemented in your brain when you put them in the right place. So uh, I have a template, by the way, if you guys are interested in how to create that, I can send you the template of how to put those goals on your phone, on that lock screen, so that you see them every single day. And uh, last but not least, because I'm running out of time here, uh, create clarity and specificity. Create clarity and specificity around your vision. So take the time, take that quiet time to get clear and then create very specific goals. Create deadlines for when you need to meet them. So many people that I coach and interact with, I see people go a week, two weeks, without checking in on what they're doing. So weeks go by. They don't really understand how much time is going by. When I told you this morning, 6% of your year is gone, guys. It's gone. If you don't keep up with that, every single morning on this show, typically, most mornings, I talk about how many days are left in the month, how many days are left in a year. It's a reminder of me to me of where we are and where we're going, how much time we have left. How, how time never stops, guys. So create clarity and specificity and repeat it in your days as often as possible. Every single day. This planner sits here every single day and gets written in every single day. Every day I write down my goals. Every day I write down the to-do list. Every day I write down the things that have to be planned forward. That's how we get more efficient. That's how we get the flywheel to spin faster and faster and faster. I wish I could share more. I mean, that was probably only about 15 minutes 
uh, of Britain's presentation, and it was absolutely incredible. Um, I wish I could share more of it with you, but uh, for, for time's sake this morning, uh, we'll have to end it there. But I wanted to give you guys an idea of all the things that were covered. I know there's a couple uh, you know, people on this stream that, that were actually at the Gold Digger Retreat. So if you guys want to share some comments or things that you know kind of stood out to you from any of these three guys, from Jeremy, uh, Jordan, or Britton, uh, by all means, put them in the comments and uh, let, let's hear you know kind of what stuck with you uh, from these guys. And uh, for the people who were there, uh, I am uploading uh, Britton's video, the, the webcast today, and I will send it out to you guys so that you can re-listen to it over and over and over again. And we'll then we will have all of these, um, all of these hour long segments or hour and change long segments that these guys did. They will be loaded into Top Contractor School online and every single person that attended uh, Gold Digger Retreat will have access to those videos uh, forever for life. So, um, but I hope this was helpful, guys. I hope this gives you an idea of you know, it's not just uh, personal development, it's not just life strategy, but it's also tactical business things that you can take back and implement into your business uh, and just turn everything to a whole new level. So uh, these three guys were unbelievable. The content that they delivered was phenomenal. And uh, man, I, I, I'm just super, super proud of what these guys brought to the table and delivered to the people uh, that were there for, for the retreat. So uh, again, I hope it was helpful, guys. It's almost 8 o'clock, uh, so I'm going to cut it off here. Uh, tomorrow morning, I will not be here at 7.30 because I will be on a plane headed to Milwaukee. Uh, for those of you who might be in the Chicago, uh, Milwaukee area, Cheat Codes for Business is this Saturday. So I'm speaking at that event. Myself, Brett Sutherland, Jordan Stupar, Sam Lister uh, on, the, on the agenda for the day. So there's four of us. We've got a Q&A panel. We've got all kinds of stuff going on there. So if you guys have the ability to make it there, uh, by all means, I would encourage you, even if you're not in the area, grab a flight. Um, this is a small, it's a small group, so it's not going to be a huge group, and you'll get one-on-one -on -one interaction with every single speaker, every single person that's there. Uh, so I would encourage you uh, to grab that ticket. I think it will be very valuable. Jordan never disappoints when it comes to uh, putting on these types of things. So Jordan Stupar is... is uh, hosting that event. So uh, if you guys need some information on that, shoot me a DM uh, and I'll post a link probably in the comments here if you guys want to grab some tickets for that. I believe there are just a couple of tickets left. So if you're if you're thinking about doing it, I wouldn't wait because I would assume sometime today those will all be gone and you won't have an opportunity. So that'll be Saturday all day long. And then uh, Sunday I'll be flying home. Monday I'm flying to Nashville. And then Tuesday I have the Leadership Boot Camp at the National Pavement Expo from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock, uh, myself and then Chris Hogan and Dave Ramsey, if you guys know uh, Dave Ramsey from uh, Ramsey Solutions. So Dave is a financial guy, uh, but the, the Ramsey team is speaking after me uh, to the Leadership Boot Camp at the National Payment Expo. And my team, myself, we will all be uh, down in Nashville for the entire week next week for the National Payment Expo. So for those of you guys who are in the industry, looking forward to seeing you there. And if anybody's on here that's just from Nashville, and you want to connect, uh, by all means, reach out to me. I'd love to see you and uh, meet you in person. So again, thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope it was helpful. I hope it gave you a little bit of a high-level understanding of what we covered at the retreat. And uh, as always, I appreciate you guys tuning in. And uh, I will see you at some point tomorrow, but it won't be 7.30 a.m. So uh, that's it for today, guys. I'll see you tomorrow again on Morning Perspective. And I love you guys, man. See you tomorrow.